All right, any discussion of fundamental movement, it has to really start with breathing. If the breathing's not correct, the body's rejecting whatever you're trying to teach it. So in terms of movement, in terms of correction, in terms of rehab, you've got to really make sure that the breathing's dialed in. If you look at an athlete that really owns a certain movement pattern, he or she's not breathing hard, probably not breathing through the mouth, certainly not panting. So we want to train the breath to be as effortless, as smooth, and as calm, but deep as possible. Right now, I'm going to have them demonstrate what's called an apex breath. This is closer to what you see most people breathing as. It's not efficient, and it actually uses a lot more of the upper body to breathe. So if you watch the chest, especially Cody's shirt, because he's got the logo there, as he's breathing, as he's inhaling, you'll notice the logo move. This means that more of the neck is involved in breathing and less of the lower abdomen. If your diaphragm is involved in breathing, however, now I'm going to have you guys switch to diaphragmatic breathing, the waistband is where the center of the breath happens. So looking at Jimmy's shirt, you notice the logo moving more so than you notice his chest moving. So as his belly moves and rises and falls, and also on Cody, you see the logo on the top where his chest is, not moving nearly as much as his waistband. That's a good sign. Now, if you've got someone that has a hard time latching onto this thought or latching onto the ability to be able to move his or her breath from the collarbone line down to the waistline, one of the ways to help cue that is through crocodile breath. Crocodile breath would require them to turn over, but let's shortcut that a little bit. Through reactive neuromuscular training, you can give someone a way of accessing that sort of movement pattern, even that movement of breath, without having to over cue them verbally. A verbal cue is going to be nice, but a tactile cue, one that they can feel, is one where they're going to learn better. So that's where the sensory rich environment is so important. Right now, if you notice, Jimmy's breathing from his lower abdomen. So the logo on his shirt, which is right at his waistline, is moving way more than the chest is. That's diaphragmatic breath, a lower abdominal breath. Cody's breathing from his chest in this particular instance. The chest is heaving, and the logo on his shirt is moving way more than his waistline is moving. That's an apical breath. In this situation, he's actually in a, in a state of mild stress, and this breathing is inefficient. He'll come closer to hyperventilating, and his face will probably turn red, and he's wasting a lot of energy as far as the breath goes. Now, once he switches down to lower abdominal breathing, you're going to notice things change for him, not only metabolically, but also in terms of his stress level. In a parasympathetic environment, when his body's not in fight or flight mode, but he's really calm and he's trying to be efficient for optimum performance, this is how the breath is going to be. Throughout this training, throughout all of these progressions, we're going to try and maintain lower abdominal breathing. This is an important thing to keep focusing in on. No matter how much you think you're breathing this way, keep checking to see if you can breathe more down into the abdomen rather than the chest. Now, if you look at how Marianne's breathing right now, not only notice that her shoulders and her chest are involved in the breath, but also look at the tension in the neck. That kind of breath, that kind of apical breath, really wastes energy. The center of your movement, especially when it comes to breath, shouldn't be the neck. It should be much lower in the body. So now, as she transitions to lower abdominal breathing, she wants to relax the neck, maybe move the shoulders around a little bit, and then wag the neck just a little bit to just sort of check whether or not there's any extra tension in there. The neck just needs to be a conduit through which the breath gets down to the lower abdomen. And as she's breathing from the lower abdomen, you notice that the chest doesn't start heaving anymore with each breath. And ideally, the neck should be less tense as well. So as I was explaining earlier, one of the ways to get a better sense of feedback when it comes to your breath is reactive neuromuscular training. Now, one way of thinking of RNT is to feed the mistake. In this case, I just want to give you a sensory rich environment so that you get to feel where you want to breathe from. What they're going to do in this case is take kettlebells, relatively light ones, especially compared to their size, and put them really such that the bell is right on the waistband. The handle's going to be up for control, and they shouldn't be death gripping it, but just using the handle to lightly be able to control it so it doesn't roll off. But now inhaling, they want to be able to push their lower abdomen up against the bell. So if you wouldn't mind. Now they actually have something to feel where they want to direct that breath from. And as they inhale up, engaging those muscles of the lower abdomen to create that vacuum, to draw the diaphragm down for more breath, this is what's going to give them that sensory-rich environment. And progress learning, all about that sensory-rich environment.
As you can see, for someone that's bigger and stronger and got the power lifting or power sports background like Cody does, I'm going to put a bigger bell on him. He's got a 24 kilo bell, and if you're new to this and you don't know how to access that breathing, you may need a bigger bell to give you more stimulus. So Cody, as you can tell, as he inhales and exhales, you'll notice the bell rise and fall. So he's inhaling by pushing the bell up, kind of like filling up a balloon. As you exhale, the bell just falls back down. Marianne and Jimmy are doing the same, but with slightly lighter bells. Again, the whole idea behind the load is to create something that's proportional. If you put the bell itself too high up, you're still going to be breathing abdominally, but not ideally. You want to take that breath down as low between the hip bones as possible. So you notice that all three of them have the bell positioned pretty much right at the waistline. So in Jimmy's case right now, if you notice his breath, the handle's moving a little bit more than the base of the bell. So what I'd like him to do, and I'm going to cue you as you're doing this, is to just try and make sure that the handle isn't moving so much. But now, as you inhale, I want you to push the bottom of the bell up higher. And I want you to do it in a really exaggerated fashion. So draw in that air a little bit deeper and get this to move, the bottom of the bell to move up way high. There you go. Good. Exaggerate it even more. Really dial it in. Really fill that lower abdomen, almost like you're trying to blow the hips apart just with the depth of that inhale. So notice, again, how much I'm cueing him verbally, but he's still got that feedback tool. And also, I have a visual tool to see how much he's able to draw that breath down. So in terms of coaching him, this is rich. Now, I want you to still work on that inhale. This time, inhale super deep, pushing up, and hold it. Good, exhale. On the out, now I want you to wiggle your shoulders out a little bit. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Notice how much more motion that he's getting out of the bell itself, wiggling the shoulders, loosening the neck. Why we're wiggling the shoulders and loosening the neck is so that you understand the coordination aspect of movement. Right now, all of the energy should be focused here, not tension up here. So that's why we want to occasionally get some movement somewhere else so that you know what you don't want on board and you know what you do want on board. Feel different now that you're breathing a little bit deeper down in like that? Yes, sir. Okay. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification button.